Reddit seems to be funky. I mean, it is the last stream, so I guess we couldn't really expect it to be anywhere else. But I'll say indeed and greetings unto you, beloved and holy friend. <sighs> Thank you for joining me again. We're going to talk about letting go today. Letting go. We hold on to many things. We hold on to things that we forget we were holding on to. And then someone could potentially add more load to the thing you forgot you were holding on to, re-reminding you of all of the bullshit you're holding on to. You know? Like, yeah, sure, man. I can understand exactly what you're talking about. We're going to talk about letting go of things. Letting go of old traumas. Letting go of old stories we used to tell ourselves. Letting go of the way that people treated us in the past. Letting go of expectation. Letting go of entitlement, I feel is a big one that I'm trying to remind myself of. Letting go of... Uh, narratives, you know, stories. Letting go of the story you might be telling yourself about a current situation. You know, I feel something that's really interesting to me is how capable we are to notice when we're putting ourselves through the ringer. You know, you might be noticing, and I, I consider it fighting demons, to be completely honest. That you'll, you'll be having just a chillax time, and then suddenly your mind will be like, remember that time that this person, you know, called you ugly? And, and suddenly you're having a bad time, you know, you're thinking about that stuff again, you're tripping yourself out about what that person said to you, why they said it in the first place, why they felt that way, what what drove them to be that way in the first place, you know? Were you not enough? Were you not good enough? Were you not giving enough? Were you not trying hard enough? You know, why is it you feel this way? And it's a, it's a trip. It's a trip because we, we can't really know. Coming back to this understanding, the only thing you can do is let go. Practicing. Oh my god, my story, 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 story. <sighs> Letting it go. That's our intention. Let go. Could be a, another attachment point to the whole melt more name as well. But to melt more is to let go. To let go of the ego, to let go of. Uh, a story of separation, to let go of the interpretation that you are a victim, specifically a victim. I want to let go of all of that. Let go of the worry, let go of the stress, let go of the narrative that things aren't going to be perfect. You know, I know that you know, that's a bit much. I do, I do. But it's what I want to believe. You know, I don't want to believe that we're living in a broken world, as my dad likes to say, for example. And that just doesn't, it doesn't inspire my soul. I feel aspects of the world might be broken, sure, but the world isn't broken. The world is going to be just fine without us as well. That we get to make things better, power is off. Fortunately, we got UPS, gang gang, still streaming. MDMA C saying, Melt more. Are you going to be on other sites, Discord or Twitch? I'm streaming on YouTube right now, live, as we speak. So you can check us out there as well. Nice to have you here, friend. I hope we meet again, my friend. I'm not gone. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to continue showing up every single day. Closed door ghost, morning to you. It's nice to have you here with me, friend. How are you doing today? Toby, even Shannon, even Sam. Beloved Corey as well. Thank you, friends, for joining me. Tell me, tell me, what have you had to let go of as of late? You know, before I started getting into the stream, I was sharing with Christian that the thing I'm trying to let go of right now in my life is a narrative of not being enough. You know, a narrative of that I am unworthy. A narrative that there should be some sort of Some sort of call to awareness that things are a certain way, you know? I don't know if it's power. 
I don't know if it's power. I don't know if it's uh, interpretation of importance. I feel maybe, if anything, you know, like I am particularly trying to let go of the lack of importance I felt around my dad, you know, for a long time, still to this day. It, it's hard for me to feel important. And it's, it's not the importance from a perspective of, uh, from a perspective of lack, but importance from the perspective of it being a chore to give in the first place, you know? That, that, that my dad never wanted to spend time with me or do something for me because he wanted to do that, but because he was obligated to, right? And he had to let me know what an obligation this is. And it's something that I try to be very aware of, you know? I, I feel obligations, obligations in, in the first place is one of the things that kind of drove me into doing what it is I'm doing right now, where instead of being obligated to do something, I chose to do something, right? Out of the everything that I could be doing, choosing what I want to do. Oh, YouTube, I bet it's melt more. You bet correctly. If you had money on that bet, you would be a rich man right now, MDMAC. YouTube, what is your handle or name? Meltmore, it is. Meltmore. We actually surpassed a thousand subs. We're monetized on YouTube right now. We can get paid monies. Like oh, some friends have already donated, you know, to the YouTube stream. And I, I got to find out yesterday that I need to have a tax form. And there has to be some sort of threshold. Like I have to have a hundred dollars in my AdSense account before I can even try to cash out. And I'm like, oh, of course, of course, that's the way it is. Again, stuff to let go of. <laughs> Letting go and maybe I'll do hold on. As we let go, we'll hold on to each other. Because we're letting go of our pan. We're letting go of our pan today. Our pan will cease to be momentarily. Less than 24 hours from now, our pan will cease to exist. Another thing that we're going to let go of, and yet we'll have this ability to, let, to hold on to each other. At least YouTube isn't dying as well. That's nice. Try story and even Brother Ryan saying, thanks for the, me thanks for the memories, our pan. It was so good. Just a quick stop here before heading to YouTube. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Ryan, for spending some time here with us. Whew. A moment of connectedness. A moment of friends. A moment of understanding. Letting go as we hold on. Tell me, please, what have you needed to let go of as of late? What have you been holding on to that's been weighing you down? And how? Are you gonna let go of it? Joe Schmo saying, I received some devastating news last night. My emotions are all over the map right now and I don't know how much of a contribution to love I will be able to be today. But care about you guys dearly. Hug your loved ones every chance you get. <sighs> I know there's nothing I can say. Beloved Jumpin' Jack. Beloved Joe, but we're here with you. Right, as we're letting go of certain things, we'll hold on to you. Can't say that I know how you must be feeling, but I'm here with you and I'm spending some time. Can't imagine what you're feeling right now. I guess I could imagine, but I can't understand what you must be feeling right now. But what is worth just seeing your name was love enough. I appreciate you being here with us. Sending you for the guidance as well, Corey. Holding you in my heart, jump in, sorry to hear the distress. You're in distress, love you, thank you so much. I know that feeling melt. I believe each family has a generation of fathers who miss the mark of what a father should be. And forget about it for a year and see where it's at. Like, thank you. Thank you for saying that, Brother Bay. And I agree with you as well, Corey, I do. My dad didn't have a dad. My dad's dad passed away when he was six. So I don't blame him. 
I don't blame him. But I, I am trying to let go of this mentality of lack that he instilled in me. This feeling that I'm, I'm supposed to be ceaselessly vigilant of how expensive existence is. You know, that there's never enough that I'm doing too much, et cetera, et cetera. Cable, is that a cable? Final R pan stream, it is. Final time to say, I love you, Mel, and all that we've made in this space. The sheer increase in mental and spiritual awareness, the showing up dilig diligently for change. It's been a beautiful journey and a pleasure to share with everyone. Spear Brothers, Spear Brothers with the bear. Thank you for sending some love to me as well. Mm, taking a sip of coffee, trying to reinforce, right? Give myself some dopamine, reading all of that good shit. Yeah, that helps me let go, dude. That's melting my mind. Melting my heart. Melting away all of the things no longer serving me. All of the stories of separation, all the stories of lack. All the stories of worry about where the, the next moment, you know, is going to come from what the next moment's gonna be, what I'm going to be in the next moment, if I'll be okay. I reminded myself today during my yoga practice, you know, there's a, a moment where you just hold your hands together and you stand still. You don't move, you don't have to force yourself to breathe. And I noticed that as you're holding your hands against each other, you're holding yourself, you know. And it came to me in that moment that that's all you really need. And sure, it's nice to have all of these things, you know, place to live, food to eat. But without all of those things, you know, completely naked, you could still have an experience. Thinking about Diogenes. Is it Diogenes? Maybe. Might be incorrect. Do correct me if I am. But this dude let go of everything. He let go of everything. His estate, his, you know, wealth, his clothing. He went naked. The only thing he held on to was a bowl at first, just so he can put some food in it when he wanted to eat. And then he noticed how, you know, the dogs drink directly from the, the puddles, ate their food directly from the ground. So he casted away his bowl as well. And he would be a jester, you know, he would, he would be the type of dude that goes and calls out others lavish lifestyles. Showing them that this, this understanding that they've come to of what their lives were supposed to be, it wasn't. He would, he would riddle, it would mock them, literally. I mean, he would do some other whack shit as well that's a little bit not PG friendly. <laughs> a little bit of a barbarian, but he, he still teaches me things. You know, that the power of letting go, the power of realizing that literally with nothing, you are still full. You still have everything. And it's, it's easier to let go when you know you have, right? You have at least the support of the universe. That's what I've been thinking of, been leaning into at least. So, 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 uh, thank you for joining us, friend. My dad doesn't like calling me. He thinks he would bother me. I'm 37 and I have a four month old kid. He came to visit me in Denver this summer. He hasn't called since. I have lots of anger and resentment towards him, as he has always been like this. My dad too, closed door ghost. You know, when I was in China, my dad didn't call me once. You know, for a year and a half of me being in a different country, he didn't call me once. You know, and I didn't call him either. I, I, I called him once. Uh, I remember it very viscerally because it was like an international call and it cost me 800 rand, which is like $50 for the phone call. And I was pretty salty about that. <laughs> I was like, what the, why are they charging me so much money for a phone call? But you know, the, the towers were down. I couldn't send WhatsApp messages. They were blocking all of the VPNs. So it was, it was that experience. That was the one phone call we shared. You know, and I also held on to this, this resentment, this feeling of, you know, why not? Why, why, why this way instead of another way? And I, I don't know that it helped. 
that's the thing that I'm, I'm thinking about right now, close door. Is does it help? Does it help feeling that resentment towards them? Are we communicating our needs properly? Closed door ghost. Are you communicating to your dad that, hey dad, I would really appreciate it if you made an effort to call me once a week, once a month, you know, talk to your, uh, I mean, four month old, maybe a little bit still young, but, you know, FaceTime me. I can show you how our baby is growing. I'm sending you love, dear closed ghost. Uh, closed door ghost, I think we'll. We'll get better at this process. Maybe communication is key in there, and that as well. Maybe this is weird, but in honor of our fan, I think I'm going to bury my compostable phone case to let go in honor of growth. That sounds kind of beautiful, dude. That sounds kind of beautiful. Maybe put like a little, you know, a little cross stick in it as well, or like a little hedge, hedge, hedge stone. Is that what they call it? Cues, Britney Spears, then our playlist. Jovan saying, whoa, that's one schmeck, she's so fun. This schmeck, she is one in our pan for sure. <laughs> so much love. All attachments will eventually leave. Enjoy it fully while it happens. But no, you have no real control over the phenomena. Just, you have no real control, period. You know, no real control outside of this thing that you are. Because that's the thing that really gets messed up. You know, you start telling yourself stories of separation, of lack, of resentment, of... Uh, injustice. I feel injustice is a big one. Like we have this this sense of what justice is, what what's right, right? What's what's fair. I feel what's fair is a good one. You know, that's a big one for us. Like we we as beings and even monkeys understand fairness. We understand what's fair, or at least we can perceive what's fair when it comes to a circumstance. But what's fair will differ from person to person, from monkey to monkey. What's fair is not the same fair for you. And we see fairness from different perspectives, you know. We understand it from a, a multifaceted view, like it's, it has layers. It has levels to it as well, right? Some things we consider more valuable than other things as an individual. And then the person we feel might not be treating us fairly, might be feeling we're not treating them fairly on another level that they're perceiving that you're not paying attention to. Both of you tripping out. You want some joint, Christian? Oh, I'm good. Please. Both of you tripping out about not being fair towards each other. But you're doing it, you know, to each other, basically. Hey, but the eyes, <clears throat> it's nice to have you here. Shifting focus allows for change. It allows the spotlight of intention to move so that the change you want will happen without you peer, without your peering eye. So I, I feel, I feel what you're saying, you know, and the way that it's are being visualized in my head was what I was going through today. Kind of like noticing a certain pattern of thought, uh, almost like seeing, right? Peering, as you mean, like peering with my eye into a certain feeling, into a tangent, into a story I'm telling myself. And then when I realized I was looking at this and almost entertaining it, you know, like playing the, the doll drum to its little dance that it was doing. And I just put the drum down and I breathed. I, I brought my attention fully back to my breath and that I, I'm in a moment right now and that there's things around me and that I have so much to be grateful for. It stopped me from looking at the thing, if you will. And from that point of not looking at the thing, I feel it also allowed me a state of freedom from it. You know, without my peering eye, again, as you mentioned, without having to look at it, it goes away because I stopped looking at it in the first place. Isaac, always wonderful to see your light in the room with all of the other bright lights that are our friends. So beautifully said, Corey. Sometimes we care, we scare things into stagnation with our attention. We create a loop of disappointment when 
what is needed to pay attention to is something else and a low growth to happen. So, yeah, beautifully said. Exactly that, dude. Exactly that. Brother Corey, thank you for the love. Even Gary Lee says it's wild. My dad's dad died around 6'2", man. Like, I'm curious. I'm curious, Brother Gary. Would you be willing to share, at least in part, what your relationship with your dad was like? You know, do you feel, do you feel you also had a sense of dissonance when it comes to your relationship with your dad and do you also feel this extreme mounting pressure to be differently you know i feel that's the, this is the thing that is kind of like trippy to me with my dad i remember at one point in my life idolizing my dad you know so badly wanting to be like my dad even even wanting to be called chris my dad's name is chris even wanting to be called chris like that's how much i wanted to be like my dad and then something changed you know, I feel, I feel I gained the level of awareness that I paid attention to the way my dad is, that instead of wanting to be like him, I wanted to be the opposite. I wanted to be so adjacent to it, you know, because I felt like it wasn't, it wasn't the right fractal. It wasn't the way I would want to treat my kid one day. It isn't the experience that I want to continue allowing, if you will, you know, like, almost like, Playing a experience role. Experience refers to conscious events in general, or specifically to perceptions, or to the practical knowledge and familiarity that is produced by these conscious processes. Should I keep going? No, it's thank okay, you. Siri. Thank you. What was she just? What was she trying to teach us? Uh, levels of consciousness. I mean, whoa. She might actually be contributing to the conversation, because I am. What I'm talking about is like again. Like you're, a, you're an actor. You could be, you can, I'm not saying you are. You could be seen as an actor within this game we're playing, right? Maybe you're a mom, maybe you're a dad. And then you play this role of dad in the world, right? Like it's not exactly acting because if you mess up, you know, things kind of like go awry. But it is acting. You have to act like a dad, you know, <laughs> in order to be a proper dad, if you will. And we saw our dads act in a way that was dad, you know, still thinking about them. We see all of the things they did as dad, but it's like we are trying to learn how to act differently. Letting go of the interpretation we've had of dad before and trying to, to be better, you know, and it's a hard thing to even say. It's, it's something that hurts, you know, them to hear as well. They want to believe that they're a good dad. And I think my dad is a good dad. That's the thing as well. I, I don't think he's a bad dad. I just feel he created so much separation between him and me. Like separation in how worthy I felt of his time, how worthy I felt of his money, how worthy I felt of his love, just his love, right? Technically, time and money are just different love languages to different people as well. And it was, uh, it still is uh, an experience of almost like undoing, letting go of trauma. But not, uh, trauma is one of those words that is, is so loaded as well, you know, and I, don't want to use it lightly to make light of it or to pretend that it, it's not as serious as it is, but these things go with us. They become encoded into our bodies almost, like we believe these things about ourselves. And it, it keeps informing the decisions we make in other facets and other aspects of our life as well. And I feel quintessentially that's what trauma means to me, <clears throat> that you've went through events in your life that scarred or distorted your interpretation of how the world is and then you keep living through that distortion instead of cleaning the lens instead of making sure that you're seeing it from a a balanced perspective i think i'm going to bury it in the ground cover in the garden to honor of the healing in a way too please that sounds beautiful symbolism and rituals you know no matter how you do them mean something because it's something you're doing for yourself it's insane is here too saying i can't say i've ever tried to be my pops ever but i've never had any beef or hard feelings with any family members so i don't know how you're feeling and it's okay you know like even if you don't know how i'm feeling you're still feeling what you're feeling about the feelings i'm feeling right and that's what this is about too that I can let go of wanting you to feel what I'm feeling. And I don't, you don't have to understand how I'm feeling. That is also something we can let go of sometimes. The 
the age at which I wanted to be like my dad was between the ages of four and seven. And then it stopped. Then it stopped when I started reading, weirdly enough. Like I, I had books as friends. Why do people not like me? Might have been manipulation. I, I had a friend over, one of the popular kids. And the first night that he was over at our place, he had a bad dream about a dude on a tractor chopping his head off. I know, might be a little bit visceral, gruesome. And he woke up, you know, after this dream, like 2 a.m. in the morning. And woke my parents, asked them to call his parents so that they can come and pick him up. And it was a sleepover, right? And after, after that, he never came and visited me again. And none of the other school kids played with me anymore. You know, and I didn't understand. I didn't understand. I still don't understand why he did that. Maybe, maybe he thought I was going to do that to him. I was going to tell all of the kids that he, you know, cried in the middle of the night and had to have his parents come and pick him up. Maybe he thought I was going to do that and somehow hurt his reputation, so he had to go and destroy mine first. But yeah, I guess, weirdly enough, something I have to let go of as well. How about that? How did we even get here? How did we even get here? Man, thank you, universe. Yeah, I'm, I let go. I, so man, that's that. I've held on to that one for a long time. Goodness. Oh goodness, that's uh, that's interesting. Ooh. You got a new haircut. Uh technically, my hair is just tied up. But I guess a hairstyle, right? I got a new hairstyle today. That's true. That is true. Thank you, Cauliflower, for joining us. I was definitely daddy prin daddy's princess, but I only got to be that until I was six. He was gone. So I think I understand where your dad is losing. Where your dad is losing a parent young is hard, and it's a lot of weight to carry. He lost his dad as a six-year-old. And then his mom remarried when he was a 13 year old. <coughs> so not only did my dad not have a dad during a very formative period of his life, but then he got a stepdad when he was a teenager. You know, so I feel that probably created a lot of resistance in him to, to learn like, I, I wish my dad would talk to me about these things as well. You know, that's the thing that I'm, I'm, I'm holding on to, if you will. It's like, why, why does he not just talk to me? Why does he not just tell me what things were like when he was a teenager? The mistakes that he's made. I guess, again, it's a pride thing. Can't be interpreted as human when you're a parent. Uh, how about that? I have to be this god, this god entity. Your kids need to completely deify you as a infallible, omnipotent creator. Ah, at least that's the the way I feel my dad wants to be perceived in our relationship with one another. And I feel it wrecks him that I see him as the opposite right now in the time of my life. I see him as creating. I still see him as a creator, but I see him creating narratives that does not serve him, his community, his family. And I hold on to that. I hold on to it. It's... Okay, I found this on the web for creating, creating, creating narratives that does not. Check it out. Yeah, bro, why is Sirius listening right now? Sirius like, well, what's, what's happening there? <laughs> And then I say her name and then she doesn't listen, oh, so it's even more concerning. Think I looked up to my brother till like four or five. I like copying my bro and thought 
I, wa I thought I saw him walk outside with an orange. So I grabbed an orange and walked outside. A bee stung my hand and I had an allergic reaction. It was the worst. I learned my bro didn't even bring out an orange. But I swore from that day not to try and copy whatever I thought he was doing anyway. You broke the matrix. It's insane. That's, that just sounds like some crazy manifestation type of vibes, you know, like almost your, your past or your future self, you know, teleport back into that moment to plant that little you know, image of your brother working out of an orange and then you did it and then you got stung and then the entire trajectory of your life changed. Suddenly you became a badass book writer, skater man that has been in multiple countries and is getting, getting back into working the 24th, you know, in like nine days, dude, you know? Yeah, in like nine days. Uh, so I, I don't know if I get, I'm allowed to share this information. Sorry, it's insane, but it's insane got a new job in his new country that he's living in. We're proud of you, Brother Bear. Thank you for sharing some space with us. Love you, buddy. The way the bub goes. The way she goes, bub. Thank you for joining us. It's nice to have you here, friend. Thanks for your hard work towards peace and awesomeness. Thank you for sharing this journey with me, dear friend. I know that you're doing the same. It was hard for me to talk about it until the pandemic. Then it was time to heal. Most just don't know how to heal. They just shove down the pain. They eat it, they drink it, they try to have sex on it. They try to run away from it. They try to build layers around it. But very few of us are willing to release it and confront it. Right, this understanding that the only way out is in. It's the only way we can go. Thank you, lol, yeah, maybe it was a Matrix moment. I actually went back into the past and who I thought was my brother was actually me. There we go, dude. Maybe you just had like a Matrix glitch moment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm, now I'm connecting the dots as well. It's insane. Suddenly it makes sense to my brain. I'm like, oh, of course, of course that's what happened. And then, and then you was like, you were a self-fulfilling prophecy. By going out there, you saw the, the reflection of yourself, you know, in the past again. So you were like creating this little feedback loop that completely changed your entire life. Matrix breaker. There we go, it's insane. There we go, dude, bereave. You have to bereave. That's what, uh, ju 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 You're loved and held dear all the same. I'm sorry that you're hurt, feeling hurt, that you're, I'm sorry for the hurt you're feeling, making a cup of warm thoughts. And love for you, friend. Thank you, Shalom, for sending that love. You were ceaselessly vigilant, but in a different way. You help guide us and shine bright for those who have had their light dim. <sighs> Again, this imagery of us creating like a bonfire as we're coming together, right? Each of us being being a pillar on fire right and then to coming together we're making this bonfire and a bonfire can burn brighter hotter and then when we go back into the universe we're all burning a little bit brighter melting a bit more if you will dm <laughs> so we can go and help other people you do the same is what i'm trying to say that all of you have that same light thank you for for lighting others you know putting other people's souls alight as well Mel, you're an amazing human. Love you so much. Flower ID. Thank you for joining me, friend. It's nice to have you here, too. I'm only as amazing of a human as you are, dear friend, right? To someone who hates themselves, they probably hate me, too. Be like, this dude's a fucking asshole. Hippie motherfucker. And I'd be like, yeah, sometimes I am an asshole. Oh, man. Sometimes I am a hippie motherfucker. <laughs> it's, it's, all, it's all what you see. Thank you for seeing me, Flower ID. I appreciate that so much. Uh, all stories of duality. So many of them, Brother Ryan. So, so many of them. Uh, Dad. Dad smiles at you for getting good marks on your test. Wow, you're doing so well. And you create this narrative. Oh, Dad happy when I do things. And then you keep doing things over and over again. At the end of the day, not even knowing why you're doing it in the first place, but you're so, so invested, so in the loop, so... <sighs> I 
convinced. Maybe convinced is the word I'm really looking for. So convinced that whatever this thing is, this story, this feeling of separation is real. That you are in fact alone. That you are nothing. That you are small. That you are unworthy of love, attention, appreciation. And the stories we tell ourselves are powerful, dear friends. And only you can tell your story. You know, I think that's the real crux of the problem. And we, uh, technically, only you can tell yourself the story, but they try, they really try to convince, your, to convince you to tell yourself a story of loss, of lack. Of victim mentality, of smallness. It's easier to get you to do things when you feel that way. It's easier to get you to buy things when you feel that way. That, oh, I'm somehow not enough. <coughs> Maybe if I get this thing, this pill, this relationship, this car, this house on the beach, this... then surely, then I'll be enough. Then I'll be happy. Then, then I'll be happy. Creating this condition, telling yourself actively that I'm not happy right now because I don't have this thing. I, the reason I'm not happy right now, even, is because I don't have this thing. And surely, once I have that thing, I feel that's the, the ultimate thing to let go of. Just the thing in itself, the, the holding on to a narrative, to a, a story that things should somehow be differently. That things aren't right right now, you know? That suffering is the one for things to be differently. It really is an interesting experience we find ourselves in here. Arpan's death, the end of one thing, yet the beginning of change, as in death birth. I guess. I don't, I've never heard the words use death birth like that, but that's, that's pretty lit, dude. We're gonna start streaming on you now, like officially slash with dedication, right? That's gonna be a whole change. It's gonna be a whole new experience to really get used to again. And I, I feel I'm looking forward to it. I, I, I'm looking forward to it from the perspective of neurons, you know? I'm like imagining my brain changing changing because there's change you know on a literal level and just seeing where that takes us again as it always does what do you say your grandfather just passed gary are you saying your grandfather just passed i think no i don't know if he's saying that ryan jobat no shan six year old not six o'clock i think so as well yeah oh uh thank you for clearing up the meme thank you for asking amara feeling better she is feeling a little bit better still a bit sick but feeling better even better than yesterday. Thank you again, of course. Happy she's on the mend. We must let go of the concept of fair for the concept of love. One is balanced in the moment. The other is balanced over a lifetime. Yo! Yo, dude, that's... That's gorgeous. Yo, that's so beautiful, Isaac. That one has to be written down into the book of things we're saying, dude. You, My brain is... Very happy, oh. Good job! You good job, you! Such a good job, you! <laughs> That's beautiful. Let me read it once more.
We must let go of the concept of love. <laughs> no. Of the concept of fair for the concept of love. One is balanced now. One is balanced over a lifetime. Do. Thank you so much for sharing that, but the bear. Sena is here too. I have work right now and I just wanted to send y'all love. The Melty and the Meltmore family. Thank you, Sena, for sending some time. Susanna is here too. So much love to you, Gary. One love, brother bear. Thank you for sending some 420 vibes. I'll, I'll smoke to that. The intentions that I wrote on this joint is uh, a Gebu symbol, Degas, uh, Kianas, Kianus, the fire symbol, and then the one that has like a little cap, straight line cap. And then on the inside, letting go or let go. On the outside of the paper, hold on. You know, paradox. All paradox will be reconciled. One love, all right? So much love to you. Thank you for sending the 420 vibes. Mm -hmm. Memento Mori is all I keep thinking. Remember death and cherish time with the people we have while we have them. Not even just death, but just time in and of itself. You know, that someone might not necessarily die, but you might not get to spend the same time with them in the way that you might be able to right now. To cherish that. I've really been enjoying Christian Zippo. Feels like a piece of alien technology. And yet it's one of the oldest things we've held. I'm just imagining generations upon generations of men holding on to these little things, you know. I'm imagining dudes in the absolute, like the reason they develop these things is so that dudes in the middle of the freaking battlefield could still light things. This thing serves as a little bit of a windshield so you can still have a flame in bad weather. And then being able to have one of these and it like saving your ass over and over again, being able to light a fire to stay warm. So much mental power in such a small little object. <clears throat> I remember for years I was so confused and kind of hurt because she randomly ghosted me I think I missed a piece. Uh, I learned this weekend that one of my soulmates or vibration partners actually committed suicide. I remember for years I was so confused and kind of hurt because she randomly ghosted me and our connection was so strong. It's good to know what happened to her. At the same time, I don't know if that knowledge is worse. Getting ghosted and learning only much later that this person ended their existence. <sighs> I can't imagine. I feel, I feel knowing there's a reason you know, right? And again, that knowing in and of itself means that it's probably for the better. She passed back in 2017, you see, that's, that's so long ago. That's so long ago. It doesn't make it doesn't make it any better, but again, now you know. And you get to remember her. I don't know if it's bad or good in context of that as well. I guess it, it becomes a whole new thing to let go of. To let go of the story that there is a separation. To let go of the story that you're, you could be responsible, that you didn't do enough, that you weren't good enough, you know, and then that's why this thing happened, or if only you said this thing, if only you did that thing, then surely things would be differently. I feel the knowledge of every, of, of, if anything allows you an opportunity to let go in a way you might not be able to if you didn't know in the first place currently experienced something hard of a vibration partner too, not suicide, but our connection was strong and life-changing. So I get it, it's insane. It's hard. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that connection as well. Like I'm, I'm almost in this state of like, 
this belief while at the same time that feeling of of course you know the amount of stuff that's happening to us as a collective right now it's like we're all fighting demons like actual demons right like these these dark experiences these dark thoughts these feelings of inadequacy of lack of stress of worry about who we are and what we are like those are the demons in my personal perspective these these feelings that are any less than love right if love isn't true within an experience you are going through right now it's it's not the experience that you're supposed to be having right that you're worthy of always having fight the demons friend shine your light and again i had this whole dream around this topic and we did a whole stream you don't fight demons by you know kicking and screaming and you know literally losing your shit and being a, a strong a strong person physically you know flipping tables if you will you fight demons by being still and realizing that from you radiates light and light travels in every direction at the speed of light however fast that is supposed to be right depending on the medium of course and anything that's in the way of that just gets decimated any darkness any demon you might be fighting realize that you have light in the center of you that light is the thing that kind of illuminates knowing in the first place right the fact that you can see your hand the fact that you can notice even if you can't see you can notice this moment this experience of beingness in the first place that is your light that is the thing that illuminates that can never be squeezed from you no matter how dark the feelings might be Thank you for your streams, bro. Love you. Your positivity has gotten me through many bad days. Whew. Arise. Merry glad. I hope to see you again, friend. You know, the Reddit streams might be ending, but we have a stream on the YouTube as well. If you ever are looking for more positivity, thank you for letting me share it with you. So I get it's insane. It's hard get to let go of the hope that i could connect with her again i know it was because of her family but she was living life so fully she literally took my belief to the max i was i always said being suicidal is a superpower you can let go of everything if you're willing to die and completely live she did that that's why she was so amazing and exciting to be around i was always i just always thought you'd learn to love life from that and not give up. It's insane. Like I'm, I'm melting right now, dude. Like you're making me think of uh, a girl called Marilise. I mean, she was a woman. And you know, I, I met her when she was a uh, 14 year old in high school as a 14 year old, right? We were grade eight together. And I instantly could see that there was so much to this person. And we became good friends. You know, we, we were staying in contact after high school as well, you know, on WhatsApp. And she committed suicide. She, she took a bunch of pills and she was 21 and it destroyed me. It destroyed me. I went to her funeral. I, I couldn't stop crying. I couldn't even talk to people. You know, the friends that I went to high school with. I was just paying attention. I saw so many different people there. She had touched so many different people, you know, so many, many, so many people loved her so dearly. Again, as you mentioned, it's insane. She was such a good person, such a great person to be around because of her extreme willingness to live to the fullest. And I, I, we finished the ceremony, you know, left, kind of like you, you go back to living, right? You, you go back to living, you, you go back to trying to let go of the want to see her again, the want for things to be differently, again, that want for things to be differently, causing the suffering in the first place. And then I went to a festival and these, these two girls I was talking to was having this conversation about a friend they'd lost to suicide, you know, and, 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 I, and I met them that day, 
at this festival and they're telling me about this friend they lost a suicide and I'm like goodness you know it sounds so familiar what's her name and they're like Marlies and I trip out I'm, I'm I completely trip out I'm like no no way is it the same Marlies that we're talking about and they're like yeah and I take out my cell phone and I go to my chat and I open our WhatsApp, you know, text thread. And I show them the, the photos, you know, that me and her sent to one another. Like, she had this particular photo where she was extremely blazed, laying in the bed, you know, like, scrawny eyes. She looked like a massive stoner. And it was hilarious. And I show them this photo and we're all just like sobbing, crying. <sighs> so emotional. And, you know, the fact that we could connect with one another about this friend, like a connection was made, you know, around a friend. She, she was still bringing people together even in her afterlife. And Gio, hello to you too, friend. That's what really shocks me, because she was so amazing, but rest in peace. Her suffering and sorrow is over. We don't know what happened next. It could be good. I believe it is, you know, to be completely honest. Death is not something that I'm quite scared of as well. But like one of my favorite things to say about death is that it's not dangerous. I know. It's not dangerous to die. <laughs> it might be dangerous to get, you know, hit by a truck. It might be dangerous to stand on the cliff of the edge and then walk over. That might be dangerous from a bodily standpoint, but it's not dangerous to die. That is just the thing that happens once you've reached critical damage uh, into this vessel, right? Maxine has shared an interesting perspective as well of like, it's like taking off uh, a tight shoe. Moving on. Embracing what comes next. And this might be a topic that creates like a sense of unease even. And for me, there's a little spider running around on the top of my cover. This, this, this feeling you're having right now of just awareness, of paying attention to what is, has been with you forever. And will continue to be with you forever. That there is no escaping. And it's not something that needs to be escaped. It is a coming coming to the conclusion that is beingness itself, right? Almost like a, a loop that arises, a, a fundamental principle that needs to be expressed. The observer. And this observer continues. And I believe, I believe that observer is technically the thing aware of everything, right? That behind your eyes, if you will, the thing observing is the same quintessential thing, the same essence that observes from every perspective. But there is, there is no separation. There is absolutely no separation. There's no, there's no point at which you start and the rest of it ends. And just because we die, what makes us think that that's any differently? <laughs> right? Just because this body ceases to exist, or at least you, you cease to exist in this body, what makes you think that that's, that means you're gone, right? Your body is still very much here, becoming a part of the soil again, depending on whatever you know, route you choose. And, you know, this thing that you are, this awareness that you are ceaselessly occupying, continues that your awareness have continued in, in weird circumstances, that you can go to sleep that awareness ceases to be gets transported into a dream realm which you can rarely remember that much of and then gets re-transported into this right physical space and we're like yeah that's just how it is i dream and then i find myself in different worlds where physics doesn't matter you know and my brain is like yeah it checks out <laughs> You know, where I have superpowers, where other people have superpowers, where I can have other conscious entities around me, have conversations with, be convinced they're real. And yet, then I wake up from that dream and I'm like, oh, neat. That thing I do. And then we're scared of death. Like, that's not the exact same thing on the other side. 
right? There's no, ex there's no escaping. So there, you might as well live. You might as well actually exist. You might as well be here for it. You know, and, I, and I'm, I feel like I'm talking to myself, really. Like I, I went through the whole attempting suicide thing as well. You know, even like researching, making sure that I, I, I'm, I'm gonna do it the way it's supposed to be done, if you will. And then in that state, you know, like literally on the edge, you know, of which side we're going to fall to, realizing that it just continues. It just continues that I can either, I can die right now, and then one infinity later, I'll find myself right here, again with the choice to die or not to die. To live or not to live, to be or not to be, right? And then I'm going to choose to be here again. And then I'm going to have to do what I was supposed to do in the first place anyway. So I might as well do what I'm here supposed to I'm supposed to... I might as well do what I'm supposed to do now. Be here. That, that's what you're supposed to do. You're just supposed to be here, really. It's kind of like a joke almost. And it's, it's not that easy, unfortunately. Like, they've created conditions. Assholes. What the... Asshole, they've created conditions to be here. You have to keep breathing air. You have to keep drinking water and eating food. Damn it, you need shelter. Why can't I just, you know, be a turtle universe? I could I could just pull my arms in and I can sleep. I have a I have a house. Well uh so why <laughs> let it go. Let it go. Take care, Heather. Heather? Casey? I think I missed. Can't stay. I wanted to say I love you. My son is very sick. Yours too. So many kids feeling bad. Thank you for the words on the anxious feeling regarding loss and transformation. Much needed. Love you. Thank you, Heather, for being here with me and listening. Yeah, energy doesn't just disappear. No. <sighs> that doesn't happen. And we don't even know the, like, matter. Just matter, for example. Right? We keep looking for it. <laughs> that it's like the uh, the atom the atom was supposed to be the smallest indivisible part of the universe right that's where that's where the meaning was arise from atomos that you keep cutting something and then you eventually reach one of something but we've never been able to do that right like just think about that <laughs> we cannot come to just one of something. It's, it's just turtles all the way down. You know, oh, we, we found an atom, a single atom. It's like, oh, cool, cool, cool. Get closer. Oh, there's subatomic particles. There's multiple parts that makes up one. Oh, okay, okay. And then we go back. <laughs> the better our tools get, the more the loop keeps going. And then we're supposed to believe that consciousness arises from matter. Like this thing, this, this nothingness, this uh, stupid, you know, inert soil becomes conscious instead of believing that this consciousness manifests itself in infinite complexity right now as being a human being, you know, being able to put your feet in the dirt, knowing that there's microorganisms that is that same divinity taking care of the said, you know, soil. Like the, the amount of craziness that we are existing in ceaselessly is too much to process. And that's why we, we, we have to filter a lot of it. But that filter, unfortunately, can get stuck, broken, stained. That you, you, see, you start telling yourself stories of dread, stories of lack, stories of anger, not even anger, uh, resentment. Resentment, I think, is a good one. Resentment. Ah, fuck this. Fuck, fuck these people. <laughs> and then it's like, your body feels that. It's like, it, it, it encodes into you this sense of things are not right. Things are not right. Things are not right. And that, that's not good for you. It doesn't, it, it's not something that you can ever, ever escape if you don't stop yourself from continually doing it. Thanks, y'all. I'm following you on Twitch. I haven't added anyone on you now yet, but I will. You can contact me on Discord also. Love you, Shivan. Yes, they might hospitalize him. Praying not though. I hope so as well, Heather. Goodness. 
is he okay? Is it is it something you do you, like? Do you know what's wrong? Have you haven't uh, had it by the doctor at least? Oh, eating food is a hard one. I'm gonna lie. Sometimes I just don't wanna. <sighs> eating food I have fluctuated between those two not wanting to eat and feeling like I'm an unfillable black hole I, I like to think of myself more as a quasar <laughs> yeah black hole spinning super fast the energy is trying to absorb becoming plasma beams that mm -hmm fire out from it the the brightest thing in the universe but i wish i could help dry story in like appetite is something that i feel is so underrated it's something so complex and something that creates so much nuance in the human experience and it's not very well understood like it's i mean it's kind of well understood at this point. It's not well understood by the general public, but it's well understood in science, you know, the whole ghrelin, you know, loops thing. Like, and there's things that like appetite suppressants makes you stop wanting to eat, having enough dopamine in your brain. Maybe it's a good thing. Maybe you have more dopamine. That is precisely me. <laughs> oh, try and stay healthy, right? If anything, like, I feel that's the biggest thing with me, Dry Saurian. If you're, if you're in that space where you, you don't want to eat something particular, right? And then it's almost like this inertia to getting something to eat. And then we usually get the things that are easiest to eat, right? The, the most processed food. I feel, if anything, trying to cook meals, you know, when you do allow yourself to eat, even trying intermittent fasting, Right, not eating for an entire day and then allowing yourself one large meal, and getting getting some some whole foods inside of your body, that helps. That has helped me. It, it helps me regulate the amount of hunger I feel as well, especially during the day. Either I want to hear my stomach growl, or I'm an endless. I'm not going to say. I do fasting, extended fasting as well. I'm actually planning on maybe doing some fasting again. I'm gonna probably go keto for a few weeks, maybe for a week, and then fast for the next few days like I, I understand right food is a weird one food is a weird one you know talking about letting go of things that's a hard one to let go of because you have to keep eating food and it's so easy to eat food you know it really really is something we we take pleasure in and you know we find ourselves at an age where we have access to so much So much, you know, that it's very easy to do things that we know doesn't actually serve us, but it's so easy that it creates, it, cre it makes it almost hard not to. Cooking food for more than just one night definitely helped me. That is a good one, you know, then you can almost like fall back on that. Instead of having to take something out of a, of a package, you, you already kind of created the meal in, in beforehand. Have you ever considered, you know, doing like meal prep for the whole week? So I have no excuses not to eat. It's a good one, right? Like if the food is prepared, that's already a, a big barrier to entry. How did Christian's interview go yesterday? It went well. He said the third interviewer asked him something, asked him to do something that was like crazy, you know, in the scope time. And the, the scope slash time limit that he had, he had to integrate a something tree, you know? I was like, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm, pretending to know what he's saying to me. But it went well, mostly, you know, he sounded professional, he sounded calm and collected. Uh, most of his interviews, he had four different rounds of interviews and the, like coding interviews as like a lot of work. He was drained, like literally four hours of like ceaseless work to, to have an interview done. He says that he would be surprised if they didn't hire him. Please manifest with him. I was, I was thinking about this today. I was seeing Christian get this email and the smile going over his face or get this call and this smile coming over his face and then him trying to call me and tell me that he got the job right i was like just tripping out about how how happy he would be seeing that in his reality mm -hmm. that's great thank you for the, the, the gary gary is an absolute gangster 
Thank you again, Rob the Bear. I appreciate it so much. I'm grateful for you, friend. So very grateful that I have a space like this where I just feel better when I'm near you all. So thank you for showing up for love today. It's helping me focus. <sighs> Taking a breath with you. I'm seeing some sort of weird alien technology. Looks like it makes universes, you know, creates like a two pieces of technology. And then within these technology pieces, create some sort of energy. And then it tears a hole in the universe, creating a new layer of the universe. And then it throws it out into the universe. Maybe that's how black holes start in this weird <laughs> imaginative reality. Mm -hmm. Sorry, excuse my teeth. Uh, without going too much into it, my dad had another guy step in to be his stepdad. Didn't really get along well, so it actually reflected well on him to be a good dad. Always had a good relationship. That sounds amazing. I'm so happy to hear the bear. You know, like shows you that there is that it's not doomed. Just just because you were given a certain set of circumstances, doesn't mean that you're doomed to repeat them. Gives me so much hope, brother Bay. Thank you for sharing that story. Resentment is the lover of grief and the father of regret. Forgiveness is the lover of growth and the father of peace. Oh, that's beautiful, dude. Thank you again, brother Isaac. And to be, and to the friend on Reddit whose father has seen his child only a few times. I so deeply feel that my child is 11 months old and my dad's only seen her about three to four times. It feels like I've only ever been worth the bare minimum effort and asking him for anything more has proven to be an exercise in futility. He doesn't seem to understand that it's going to take effort than asking once, then waiting for him to ask him, for me to ask him. Anytime I've tried to reciprocate, he never follows through on his end. And after I ask to see him, I learned that some people are only worth the energy they're willing to give you. <sighs> yeah. And being willing to let go of that too. Right? Being like, okay, if this is how the person chooses to be, I'll let go of that. Let go of the one for them to be differently as well. I think he saw how not to be a good dad from a stepdad and then transmuted that energy into a good fathering of me, of who is also named Gary Lee Haskins. Beautiful name, you know, happy that you could get to continue his legacy as well. I push for balance and harmony because I traditionally go from calm and collected to complete chaos with zero transition. So I appreciate having a calm face. It helps me center, quiets me in the storm. I'm happy to create a quiet space. I feel I do the same. I do the same and this space helps me be quiet as well. It gives me a sense of, of chillaxness. I'm like, okay, things are okay. I, I'm doing something I love and I get to reinforce that part of myself. Good point, man. You can either live in the distortion and get sucked into the distortion constantly or constantly clean the lens. It's up to us and how we choose to see what's happening in our lives. And it's difficult. It's difficult because we're... <laughs> we're, we're seeing it, right? So we're convinced that that's the way it is. I'm trying not to separate from the truth of harmony, but part of me wants to watch the decay right now. And even though I know that thinking is flawed, I can't shake that part of me. I understand what you're saying. You know, like uh, Brother Toasty, I've shared the understanding as well as a passive longing for death. Is that the Spider-Man 3 dance? Or... <laughs> No. You know what I'm talking about, right? The homecoming. No, no, no. no. The old Spider Man. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. There we go. Now you're seeing no, it. No, 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 no. That one goes like. <laughs> that one goes like. <laughs> like the, seeing the woman, you know, walking out of the bar, being like, oh, it's just. And he doesn't even get flinched. Oh. Toby Maguire was the best Spider Man, dude. <laughs> You should see him now, like paparazzi keep finding him and shit first. Yes, so but they like they, they block the road and stuff. Uh, they they like ruin his day. They really uh, do. I feel bad for him actually, man. 
Thank you for the gold again, age neutral. Just want to say thank you, friend. I'm gonna get a little bit more present. Hey, Jovan! Ooh, 5-5 five, five showing. Weirdly enough, I was thinking about that number. I think either last night or this morning. Yin and Yang. Did you hear Christian? Christian has, has a yin and yang little pendant, what do you call it? Like bangle? Bangle. Bangle. Wristband. My ring that I've been wearing also has one on the inside of it. And then all of these Chinese characters are the fundamental elements. <laughs> Inform my body with everything. Can't see the light without the darkness. But darkness is true. Big concerts today. Anyone feeling especially heavy? Remember to let go of any pressure. <laughs> yeah, for you cannot be wrong and you are doing amazing. Beautifully said. That's this whole stream's topic, right? Like, I feel it's so beautifully contrasting to be talking about letting go as things feel a little bit heavy. Thank you, friends. Yes, Isaac, do your best with what you've got and be proud of your effort. Be proud of the things that you've endured and what and the way that you have overcome them. It's important not to allow the hurting and mind inadvertently causing more hurt. Alan Watts says that there will always be suffering. We must not suffer our suffering. When you feel low, remember the fundamentals. Your body needs hydration, it needs nutrition, it needs movement. Those things are hard to remember when life is heavy, but this is a reminder to give yourself love. That's your van. It's mom, 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 mom. Stop. Stop it, your van. We love you to the max already. I, I don't I didn't know it's possible for me to love you even more. <laughs> Thank you for sharing something so beautifully. Thank you for sharing that reminder with me as well. Gateway process, a friend we've missed so dearly. Thank you for joining us again. It's nice to have you here. Bethany, on B. So much love to you as well. We're gonna pull a card. We're gonna pull a sacred geometry card. See what the universe has to say. Think, think hard. Think like this is I wanna see this card specifically. I wanna see this card to understand this thing, so that I can let go of no. this, this specific thing. Did you guys hurt yourself? No. <laughs> yeah, it is. But we still have qua five at least. <laughs> Blue? Mm, Maxine. No blue. But I feel, I feel you'll like this card even more than the blue one. This is one of my favorite cards. Upside down. Heart woman. I think her lilies are blue though. Doesn't this look eerily similar to the flower that you have printed as well, Maxine? Like Maxine has one of my works of art printed out and on her wall. And it is a triply similar to this one as well. I mean it's I feel like they, they could live in the same universe, but it's not that, that similar. Looking forward to this card. Heart Woman. Heart Woman, Julia. How about that? Heart Woman. Damn. Love this card. Love you. Let's see what it means. Read deep into it. I'll, I'll read the upside down meaning first, maybe. And then I'll do the, the write up. Upside down meaning goes. Ah! Well, someone you know lacks integrity. Make certain that person is not you. Mm. This hard woman is filled to bursting with the radiance of universal love and light from within. She holds in her arms three water lilies, which represent our potential for enlightenment. And she is surrounded by vibrant feather-like geometry borrowed from the 2006 crop formation. <clears throat> she stands firm in heart essence and here represents the highest and best in all of us. This card requests that you, man or woman, connect with this woman of heart and your full inner knowing and core integrity. How might you more fully embrace life's potential and live wholly from your heart? What must come to the surface in order for you to live your personal truth? Be not afraid. Release feelings of inadequacy and realize that by the original integrity of your soul, you are a powerful being of manifestation. You are the beloved child of God, perfect 
and whole, nurtured and loved. Resolve today to connect with your inner knowing and the reality of your divinity. The brilliance of fundament, the br this brilliance is fundamental to all beings. As you let your gifts shine, you also give others permission to do the same. As you are liberated from worry and not being, as you are liberated from the worry of not being good enough, your presence will without doubt liberate others, allowing your light to be a beacon of support and encouragement in someone's darkness may aid in liberating them from the shadow and dullness that holds many in doubt. Stand fully in your own inner knowing and trust the integrity of your heart. Hot diggity damn. Goodbye, Arpan friends. It was so nice to have all of you here. Today is my first day off of the kids at school in a while. So grateful to be here with you all, especially in the time for the pull the card. I mean, this is you. This is you, divine feminine mothers, right? Heart women. Literally every single one of you, heart women. Lovingly sharing your presence with the world. Thinking about Joy Vive right now as well. I haven't seen her in a while. So you love Joy Vive for you. Is it lurking in the shadows? I see you. Today, I'm glad you get to be the rest of the day. I'm super. So much love. Thank you again for sending some. <clears throat> Put the focus on work. Love you all dearly. Love you, Brother Wysig. Is our card still going? The most beautiful card. It's you. You embodied in the card, your friend. Man, I feel like I couldn't pull a better card for today. Christian has a knife. <laughs> For some reason that sounds like a joke. Christian actually has a knife. <laughs> uh, it's insane. You've been one of my favorite streamers. Keep doing what you do, friend. Please, please, insane. Don't, don't stop. Oh, especially not on account of our friend. Die. The most beautiful card. Thank you again, friends, for spending some time with me. <sighs> Namaste. The divinity in me acknowledges and sees the divinity in you, right? Something along that line. The light shining out from you, dear friend, from your heart. You can let go and there will still be more. I don't want to say goodbye. <laughs> I love you. Thank you, Majority. I'll see you again soon. Cheers, friends.